Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel, and welcome to this week's Tech Questions Quickies. So, this is where I answer all of your questions in email. You can send all your questions to techquestions at l1training.com. I'll put a link down in the description so you know where to go. So, let's get into it. Next one's from Richard B. And uh, the, the email is titled Mazda 2010-ECU Functional Overview and Resetting Power Windows. Interesting question. It says, Keith, I enjoyed your video on upgrading the ECU on a Mazda 3. I have problems with my electrical windows on my 2010 sedan. Two of my windows in the front right and front left will go down from the master switch console by the driver's door, but they, will, they won't go up when selected went to their respective doors and was able to close the windows by activating their switches and then I looked available electrical schematics and windows on the Mazda 3 and started to troubleshoot. Furthermore, the schematics failed to show any interface in the passenger window to the ECU. This makes troubleshooting potentially bypassing the ECU circuit function harder. I tried to reprogram the windows by holding the master switch open completely in the driver's window for 5 seconds and pushing it closed for 5 seconds and then tested the passenger window. It seemed to be doing something wrong and resetting the windows setting back to factory settings. It still doesn't work when I did the same process for the passenger windows. The RL rear left intermittently works correctly to close but the front right fails to always close from the driver switch console. I looked in the on the internet and there seems to be a number of different ways to set the window computer settings. All of these didn't work. Can you please provide me with the correct procedure to reset all the windows with re resetting the ECU if any problems continue with any additional manual settings are required to do a recent ECU following reconnecting the negative battery. Furthermore, I'm wondering if there are benefits of getting the ECU program updated. I do not recall ever getting ECU system updated and I'm concerned if I get the ECU updated maybe it'll introduce more problems to my car. Thank you for your assistance. Okay. Um... Richard, uh, resetting the window stuff is not going to fix this car. You have a problem with a switch or a wire or a ground or something. So you need to spend a little more time diagnosing. You should be able to manually control these windows from the master switch up and down. It has nothing to do with the uh, programming or learning configuration of these windows. After that's done, after you get it working, then you can worry about that. So you just need to spend some more time diagnosing why the windows don't go up and down. That's a totally separate issue from what you're trying to do. Quit worrying about the resetting the window settings. That's not going to fix it ever. Um, you need to just figure out why you're not getting power and ground to the motor when you command the switch. I don't, I'm not familiar with this system, um, but I can only imagine the 2010 Mazda has got to be a pretty simple uh, setup. You would want to look at the schematic for the master switch and just see where the current passes through to get to that window because I'm sure that something in the master switch is probably the issue or um, some ground or power out of it to the other side. Um, if you can control it from the other switch then the motor is good and the the switch on that side is good so it's probably the other switch or wiring between the two. Just spend some more time reading the schematic. If it falls outside of your abilities then you would just need to take it to a qualified technician. Um, and I only say I don't say it to be mean. I, I just by reading this and looking at your email stuff, I don't think you're a technician. If you are, just spend some more time researching um, electrical di diagrams and see if you can reach out to another technician in your shop that maybe is more experienced, and uh, then he can help you learn that and uh, walk through that that issue. If you're still having issues and you don't have anyone to look at it, you need to find another technician in another shop that you can possibly learn from and kind of get some mentoring from that. Um, we all start somewhere, so don't. I don't want anyone to think I'm bashing this guy because he doesn't know. I'm not bashing him. When I when I started the industry, I had no idea. It was I didn't even know what a ball joint was, okay, or how it worked or what it did. So um, by no means am I bashing someone who doesn't know. We were all ignorant at some point in time on everything, okay? So please don't take it that way. Second of all, the programming, ECU program updated. Um, MOS is one of those things where most likely the there's nothing wrong with your car that would require updating. You would want to check for any TSBs. Um, that most of them are going to be symptom related. So if you have a drivability concern or a diagnostic trouble code, we would find a technical service bulletin that leads us to a fix that may involve upgrading the software to the PCM. Upgrading the software to PCM alone should never cause a problem with the car unless it's outlined in the TSB. There are some um, software updates that do say, hey, the need to make the customer aware they will suffer from 
reduced fuel economy, but this fixes this symptom. And that's almost always the case. If you're going to have a reduced fuel economy because of a programming event, it's because either A, you didn't follow the instructions because maybe you were supposed to upgrade a component to an upgraded uh, component. Maybe there was an ignition coil revision that required a software update as well. So you did just a software update, but not the ignition coil revision. So now you have spark problems and reduced fuel economy. Just a weird, obscure example. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. There were lots of GM transmission concerns. Uh, and then when you did the software update, it said, warning, you will suffer reduced fuel economy because they originally produced the software to cause a certain kind of shift. And they determined that that kind of shifting was um, not conducive to the customer, and by changing how it shift, it also changed the overall fuel economy. So that's that's one of those, that's the only time I really ever see that. Other than that, you're going to have really no adverse effects from a successful update of the software. If you have a failed update of the software, it could render the PCM uh, useless, and then it would need to be replaced. So there's that possibility, but other than that, no, updating it shouldn't be an issue, and I normally don't recommend someone just go seeking out updates just to see if there's updated software. If you're a technician that does programming often, I do usually recommend, hey, if you're there and you see a software update, unless there is documentation, and, and I, it goes over certain manufacturers, and I covered this in a class um, at l1training.com. So if, you know, I, unfortunately, Richard, I don't know where you are in the industry or if you're just a, a end user that has some um, mechanical ability, you know, I really don't know. I'm, and, I, and again, I'm trying not. I'm not trying to be mean in any way. I'm just saying, it seems like you're trying to um, fix a flat tire because you got a belt squeal. See what I'm saying? All right, guys. Thanks for all the questions this week. Sorry I couldn't be more help to some of you guys. But remember, if you've got questions, you can send them to techquestions at l1training.com. I'll put a link in the description and maybe a little banner right here. So we'll see you guys next time.